In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of Excel's financial functions, the nPer function. And what nPer does is it will tell you how many periods are left in a loan, or if you like, you can look at the other side and see how long some asset will last given a specific return and withdrawal amount. So here I've set up a pretty simple uh, loan, which looks like a typical mortgage loan, right? We've borrowed 360,000. Uh, we're gonna pay about 6% in interest for 30 years. And then maybe we're interested to see, well, what happens if we add $500 to that payment? How much quicker can we retire the debt? And then I've broken everything out into a sort of mechanical treatment of this, all right? You could do it in fewer cells but I'm going to break it out into little pieces here. This cell just uses the PMT function to calculate the monthly payment uh, to redire this debt. Okay, so 21, 29, 54. And then, okay, what happens if I add additional to it? I'm going to take the 21, 29, and I'm going to add the 500 to it. All right, so now let's see what happens to the payoff time if we do this. So I'm going to use the nPer function, and it looks pretty similar to the PMT function, except for instead of solving for PMT, we're going to solve for the number of periods. All right, so I'm going to take the interest rate, and I'm going to divide that by 12 since we pay monthly. All right, I'm going to take the payment. All right, so that is the base payment plus the additional, and then I'm going to take the present value. And with all these financial functions, generally you're going to make the present value negative so that the answer or the result comes out as a positive number. Okay, the last two arguments are optional future value. We're going to assume it's zero, all right, so we'll leave that blank. And the type means, well, when does the interest start? And we're going to assume the interest starts the day you borrow the money. Okay, so we'll leave both those blank and we come up with 227 periods, all right, instead of the 30 years, all right? So if we want to convert that to years, I'll just go back in there divide that by 12. And so we can see we paid off in about 19 years instead of the 30. And in addition to paying it off faster, we have interest rate implications or interest implications. All right. So since we're paying it off faster, we're not going to pay all of the interest that we would have paid if we borrowed the money for 30 years. All right. So first of all, let's see how much interest it would be if we just did the terms of the loan here. All right. So I'm going to take the regular payment all right, and I'm going to multiply that by the number of years and then by the number of months. Okay, so this will give us the total of the payments. Okay, and then if I subtract away the amount that I borrowed, then I'm going to be left with just the interest that I paid. Okay, so we actually end up paying more in interest than we originally borrowed if we leave it as is. All right, so then let's see how much interest we pay when we have the additional payment. Right, so I'm going to do something very similar here, right? But I'm going to take the increased payment, all right? I'm going to multiply that by the number of years and then that by 12. And, and by the way, this comes out as 0.93. It just means that in the final year, right, we don't pay for an entire year, all right? And then I'm going to subtract away the amount we borrowed, okay? And so uh, we only pay 237000 if we can add an extra 500 a month to the payment, all right? And then, yep, the interest that we saved is just going to be the difference between these two. So it makes a lot of sense to try to pay this thing off quickly, we save a bunch of financing costs. All right, and, and maybe, you know, if you can't make $500 extra, uh, let's see if $200 is worth it. And yep, it's still worth it. You save over $90,000 in interest there. Okay, so hopefully that helps you see how the n per function works.